Hi, Mark from Shark Bait. Uh, a long time no talk, uh, but I haven't had a whole lot of things to talk about. Uh, but actually, we do now. Uh, it is end of July, uh, and we've got some new products. So we'll probably crank out a few little videos, and I'll, I'll encourage my son Sergey, who really runs the place here, um, to, to not be a shy guy and to get out and uh, show you some of the new stuff he's brought in, which is plentiful. You know, and a lot of Japanese products. Uh, he does speak a little bit of Japanese, you know, by way of learning in high school. Uh, it was a good you know, situation for him. And I had worked for the Japanese uh, before in consumer electronics and Koreans and Taiwanese uh, in an earlier career. You know, a few years ago, under Toro Tamer, you know, we had produced some travel rods filling niches in the marketplace uh, that really you know, we're untapped at the current time. You know, when the COVID stuff came out or the woo flu, you know, I backed off on pushing Toro you know, to, to maintain some of those products, you know, specifically in the world of lures and some accessories you know, and, and the trial rods, which were a big part of what Toro did, but just really wanted to focus on making sure we had inventory of the line, you know, the Toro Tamer Braid, you know, which is real important you know, to us and a couple of other retailers that we offer it to you know, through Toro. Now, uh, travel rods. There was one rod in particular. You know, we had the Surf Series, we had Inshore Explorers, Surf Explorers, and we had the Offshore Explorers. In that line of the Offshore Explorers, there was one rod in particular uh, that made use of a unique ferreling system. You know, it's a 50 to 80 pound piece that will fish that range. And that's where there still is that gap in the marketplace. You know, plenty of rods that, you know, to fish you know, 20 pound, 30 pound, that sort of stuff. Okuma has a product that will go up to maybe 50 pound application. You know, and I've seen that perform well using spigot ferrules, which is a good way of, of connecting. But as you go up, you know, in line test, you know, the pressure on the rod increases and those ferrules, those joints of where rods come together, become a bigger problem. Now, let me back the camera back a little bit and show you what we've done. You know, that 50 to 80 was a real important piece you know, for Toro. And we brought it back. You know, it's taken a little while to do it because it is a unique piece, but we brought it back. It comes in a nice tube. You know, hard case, has a strap, the strap is adjustable so you can stick it on your shoulder or however you want to transport it. Inside, you have a four-piece rod. Excuse me as I get out of the camera. And this rod is really made to do a couple of things. You know, it can work in your hands, uh, but also we know a lot of folks that would be traveling down to say, you know, Mexico, um, Panama, Costa Rica, whatever. Uh, they do a lot of um, dragging and lures behind a, a panga or a sports fisher. Uh, and so a little bit of troll duty uh, is called for, uh, as well as some bottom fishing and that sort of stuff. So, you know, the lighter rods, uh, up to maybe a 40 pound range, 50 pound range, we get a lot of use from a casting standpoint, but they're not made for troll. You know, they're not made for really the heavier applications, even yellowtail on structure. So it comes in a nice little bag. And then we put the pieces together. <laughs> Everything is wrapped up. Now you'll see for the joints, this uses a reinforced ferreling system. It's a lockdown ferrule. So let me get a little closer to the camera and you can see. These are fitted, they're individually made. Um, they're not all the same because they're done by hand. So that's one section. It fits into the receiver. That's some metal. It's notched, so you'd say it has a, a gimbal <laughs> type of position. And then we get into a unibut. Now unibuts in and of themselves, um, just for the part, is usually 120 bucks or more. You know, so you can, you can get a good idea as far as the value of the rod. The rod stands 
six feet, six inches. So six and a half feet worth of rod, unibutt, and it gets the job done very, very well and packed small given it's four pieces. And each section is less than 20 inches. You know, now, let's see how the thing bends. For that, I'll need my assistant. Before we do that load test, let me uh, <laughs> unwrap the guides. Yeah, like I said, these are fresh from the factory. Nice guide set. You can see, um, maybe, they're reinforced. A little nice cosmetic detail. A little iridescent, maybe, in terms of that ring. Made to deal with braid, of course. And mono. Yeah, we're not using rollers on these. We could, but that would increase the mass that much more. Yeah. There's that first guide. Yeah. These are only available in uh, uh, conventional form. They're not made for spinning, you know, tackle. They're made, basically, as I said, as a trolling or in your hands rod, but trolling is certainly one of the applications for it. Which makes sense when you have a not just a slick butt, you have an all aluminum butt section with gimbal. You know, there is a gimbal on the butt. Okay, let's put a bend in the rod and see what sort of action she does. As you can see, there's no flat spots where the joints are. So, and would you call that a moderate bend? Uh, moderate. Shuts off on the third section. So that's how she bends, and that's a pretty good load. That's a pretty good load. Thanks for watching our videos, which is on YouTube, Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. Please visit us online or in store. Bye!